Welcome back everyone. In this lesson, we will learn about the numerical methods that are used in finding the roots of equations. So before diving into the details of these numerical methods, let's look at uh, what we mean by the roots of equations. Let's look at a familiar example. We already know this is a quadratic equation, f of x equal to ax square plus bx plus c. Here the a, b and c are constants and if we are told to find out the roots of these equations, that means we need to find the value of x for which the function is 0. That means we need to find the value of x and uh, when we find that, if we replace the value of x in these equations, we will find the value of f of x equal to 0. So we already know the familiar analytical approach for finding the root of these quadratic equation and it looks something like this. In the, in the numerator, uh, we have two different uh, possibilities, minus b plus or minus root over b square minus 4ac. That means there are two possible roots of these equation because it's a quadratic equation, it's a polynomial of order 2. So it should have two roots. Although the above equation is very much handy and is very helpful for quadratic equations, but not all of the equations that we encounter in our daily life uh, have such uh, nice and beautiful solutions, analytical solutions. And for those cases, we have to depend on the numerical methods of finding roots. So uh, actually, uh, theoretically, we can uh, solve any order of equation, but uh, there are many methods and all of those and each of those methods have their own limitations. So we need to be careful whenever we apply a numerical method in finding the roots of an equation. Also, uh, there the roots of an equation can be complex or real as well. Both can be possible. A, an equation might have only real roots or it might have only complex roots, or it might have both of them. So we need to be careful about finding the roots whenever we, uh, what we want to find out, whether it's real or complex or both. Let's look at what we mean by functions or equations. Any function y equal to f of x can be expressed in the general notation something like this. It's uh, very clumsy, I know, uh, but it's the general form of any function. Look at each of the terms of this equation, equation 1. Uh, the first term, fn, yn, that means here the f terms are the ith order polynomial. That means f1 denotes the first order polynomial, f2 denotes the second order polynomial, and fn denotes an nth order polynomial. So in this equation, equation 1, each of the terms f1, f2, fn, are, each of them are a separate polynomial. So any polynomial can be expressed something like equation 2, a0 plus a1x plus a2x squared dot 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 a and x. So it's a polynomial of order n. So if we want to find out the order uh, polynomial of first order, so it would be something like f1 of x equal to a0 plus a1x. And if we want to find the second order polynomial, it would be like a0 plus a1x plus a2x squared. So and so on, and we can find out any order of polynomials. So that's the general notation and definition of functions and polynomials. Here, uh, we need to remember that uh, all of these terms, a0, a1, a2, a3, these a terms are constant terms. So these functions that we have seen are algebraic functions, but there are another kind of functions that is known as transcendental function. And these transcendental functions include the trigonometric functions like we have encountered in our algebraic courses sin x, cos x, tan x, these are trigonometric functions. Also, there are other transcendental functions like exponential functions, logarithmic functions, and uh, other less familiar functions as well. So these functions, which cannot be expressed in any of the notations of 
<coughs> equation 1 and equation 2 are known as transcendental function. So, for example, f of x equal to these are some of these uh, transcendental functions, some are logarithmic functions or exponential or trigonometric. So what we mean by bracketing methods? Bracketing methods are very much commonly used in numerical methods of finding roots of an equation and they mainly deal with the methods that exploit the fact that a function typically changes sign in the vicinity of a root. We already know what we mean by the root of an equation. We mean by the root that for any, for a specific value of, a, uh, of the independent variable x, the function value would go to zero for that value, uh, for that specific x value. So that's what root is. So if we want to visualize this fact in graph, the function, if we plot the function uh, within a graph, we will see that the, uh, if the function intersects the x axis at a specific point, that intersection is called the root and that's our desired result. So in bracketing methods, we assume that the function changes its value, changes its sign uh, within the vicinity of that root. That means at one side of the root, the function value is positive and at another side of the root, the function value is negative. And that's what we assume in bracketing methods. Also, this is called bracketing methods because uh, we have to initially guess two uh, values. We have to initially assume two different values to, uh, as, a, as an assumption. And we assume that there is a root within this within that boundary, you know, bounded by the limits, and uh, that's why it is called a bracketing method. So what we use is that we initially guess a boundary, and step by step we uh, we incorporate some methods or criteria to reduce the size of the boundary. So think about this, say any boundary which is reduced step by step, step by step, it will eventually uh, converge to a specific point and that point is our root. So we will see the details uh, about these uh, bracketing methods in later lectures and videos. But before that, let's look at what we, uh, what we meant by changing the sign of the function at the vicinity of the root. So let's find out the root of a specific function f of x. So we have to find out the value of x for which f of x equal to 0. So if we visualize the graph, uh, you know, we will see that the function intersects the x axis at a specific point and that intersection is our root. Look at that, the vicinity of the root uh, the, at one side uh, the, the function value is positive and another side the function value is negative. For example, on the left hand side, towards the left hand side of the root, the function has positive values and towards the right hand side of the root, the functions have negative values. So that's what we assume in bracketing methods that the function changes its sign within the vicinity of the root. And that's what the basic criteria of applying the bracketing methods. So the root is probably at x equal to 14. So below x equal to 14 that means for x less than 14 the function has positive values and for x greater than 14 the function has negative values so that's what graphical graphically we mean by the bracketing methods so this is one type of example where the function intersects the x axis at a specific point so it's just one root but there are other cases that might appear in practical examples so let's look at some of other examples. Look at this. This function does not intersect the x axis at any point. That means should we have any root? No, there should be no root because the function doesn't intersect the x axis within the vicinity, within the range. In the second case, look at this. The function intersects the x axis at a specific point. It is similar to the case that we have seen in the last slide. So there should be one root because the function intersects the x axis at a single point. 
so that's why there should be a single root so we need to remember that the number of times the function intersects the x-axis there should be equal number of roots so look at this the function intersects the x-axis at two separate points so there should be two separate roots in the fourth case the function intersects the x-axis at three separate points so how many roots there should we have yes there should be three separate real roots and uh, in the fifth case it's uh, different from the other cases look at this in the first point the function touches the x-axis it does not intersect it just touches it's a tangent to the line of x-axis at a at a single point and that point is this this one it is the point where the function touches the x-axis and on the other hand at this point the function intersects the x-axis so what's the difference in the first case when the function touches the x-axis there are two similar roots at that point remember when the function touches an x-axis there are two similar roots at that point that means the roots are equal and there are two similar two similar roots on the other hand since at this point the function intersects the x-axis there is a single root at this point so in total there are three roots for this function two are similar and one is separate so we need to uh, separate the different uh, different examples of where these these uh, separate kinds of functions can appear so let's look at some uh, transcendental function some transcendental function will look like some uh, like this sine 10x plus cos 3x is an arbitrary function so what is the graph of this function it would look like this something like this so look at this there are some points where, where the function intersects the x-axis and there are some points when the function uh, touches the x-axis so there are many roots for this function and there are many similar roots for some points so that's the difference of transcendental function and algebraic function a transcendental function can be periodic for example these sinusoidal functions the trigonometric functions are periodic function that means there should be many roots possible uh, within a range so that's why we should be careful about whether those roots are in the, uh, are separate roots or whether those roots are similar roots so that means the function touches the axis so we have to be careful about those cases so what we learned in this lesson that uh, we have seen the graphical approach of finding roots and we have seen that what we mean by the roots of an equation from a graph but we have to be careful that these graphical approaches are not exact that means there we cannot find the exact point where the graph intersects because we are visually interpreting the results so that's why these graphical approaches are not very much accurate because they involve human interaction also we have seen the, uh, the different uh, approaches that we are going to use like bracketing methods and uh, open methods in, in our later lectures so although we have uh, visually uh, tried to, to, to uh, comprehend the uh, results of a root of a function so we never actually use the graphical methods practically because these methods are not very much feasible or accurate and also we were going to use the MATLAB functions in our later videos and uh, I hope you already installed MATLAB and uh, try to uh, uh, try to grasp the environmental and syntax of MATLAB coding so I hope it would be a nice uh, journey in our later lectures so that's for now and uh, thank you so much